all grown up and ready for our AARP card. We're partying all year long as we celebrate 50 amazing years of radio at Nassau Community College. The voice of Nassau Community College. This is the award-winning 90.3 WHPC HD Garden City. Listen on your smart speaker. Play WHPC. And available on Odyssey, TuneIn, iHeart, and on the WHPC app. 90.3 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box right here on WHPC. Here every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. My name is Rob Leonard. Joining me, of course, is my brother and, yes, award-winning sports writer, Tim Leonard. Welcome aboard, brother. How are you? Good morning, brother. Um, how are you? I'm outstanding. How, how about yourself? I'm okay. You want to know why I played Moni Moni? I have no idea, as usual. Because uh, yesterday I had an interview with a, well, it was a taped interview, but it was an interview nonetheless with Tommy James, the guy who originally wrote it. Wasn't that him singing it? No, that was Who's Billy that? Idol. Well, I thought it was the older, but why did no. it sound like, and why did it sound like the, I don't know, eh, never mind. But you remember when we used to go uh, to the clubs, brother? You know, when Long Back Island, in the day, brother, hitting the clubs. When Long Island had clubs. Uh, the club. I'm not sure they do anymore, but no, you know, they do. Uh, they I, just, they, just they do a good job of hiding them. Anyway, uh, if you remember the the line, uh, get get. Yeah, we can't say that. On I, well, actually, though. you can. You can no, say. Can. You can just get around it. Anyway, I asked him, Billy. I, I asked uh, Tommy James about it. I said, "Have you heard about that?" And he goes, of "Yeah." He and, yeah he's probably he's probably sung it himself. He, he and he said, "I wish I was able to copyright those additional lyrics into my my song." Why everyone, can't he? Well, I don't know. Maybe just could. words. Copyright is just words. I, I mean, guess. Uh, I why don't not? Know. So anyway, he. Uh, but he. He thought he. The first time that was said back to him in a, in a concert, they thought he thought they were booing him. <laughs> <laughs> so and I'm like, oh. and instead they were paying tribute to him. They were paying. They were enhancing tri- the song. It's like like uh, like when alarm fans uh, scream out six eight during the sixty eight guns. Of course. Kind of a little uh, little kind of rewrite fan rewrite like that. Of course, of course. Anyway, lots of sports to uh, talk about. As a matter of fact, last week's show um, had an extra 38 minutes on the podcast, which is something you sometimes have to look for. You know, this show is an hour, but you know what happens? Last week, literally at the end of the show, it was announced that Barry Trotz was fired from being the coach of the New York Islanders. And then we had other things we had left over because we interviewed Michael Lewis to talk about his Rochester Lancers book. And we had other topics to get to, so we went in and added 38 minutes of exclusive internet uh, content. So yes, instead, um, of, instead of FTP from the press box, it was FTPB yeah. from the press box bonus. Bonus. So just to let you know that sometimes we do add on uh, extra material onto the podcast. We're, we're like the Yankees, brother. We tack on. Yeah, we tack on. Anyway, let's uh, talk about the Rangers. A lot of Ranger fans are happy right now. Uh, as well they should be. They went to Game 7 with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and they won the series 4-3. to three. Um, Incredible, if you think about it, brother. You know, the, the Rangers, you know, Ranger fans get crazy sometimes because they think they're not going to win. And a lot of times they don't. But they had a great season this year, and, and you know, they were down 3-1 to one to the Penguins, and, the, and they came back. But I thought about you know less you know t- another team from New York that happened to was three to nothing. It's back in 1975 when the Islanders came back and won four straight against the Penguins. So Penguins have a way of folding against New York teams in that situation. Very true, brother. Very true. And uh, so anyway, uh, so the Rangers <laughs> now go to the second round where they will play the Carolina Hurricanes. But you know, it's funny they don't say the North Carolina or South Carolina. Just Carolina, brother. Just Carolina. Just like, just like uh, the Giants and the Jets are in New York, but they play in New Jersey. Yeah, but they don't call themselves the Jersey. That's why they... would they call themselves North? Why would they say North Carolina? Why not? Why not embrace both Carolinas? Well, there is a difference. You, you go down there, they can definitely they'll, yeah. they'll tell you the difference. 
Uh, anyway, so the Rangers will play the Carolina Hurricanes starting Wednesday. I, I, w- I wish there was a little tighter on that, but that's uh, the NHL. It's a point. day. I mean, what do you want? They just played a game seven on Sunday night. They should start Tuesday. Oh, stop. That's the way you got to do it. That's the way you got to do it. That's the only way to do it. It's absurd. Anyway, uh, the, uh, the Hurricanes eliminated the Bruins. Um, and, well done, Hurricanes. Yes, well done. And, you know, it was, like I said, a, a great series. Lots of happy Ranger fans right now. They are. And as well as should be, whether they're going to be up on wearing Carolina. Chris Kreider jerseys and uh, their Artemi Panarin jerseys. Oh, there's a lot of people who never got. And their Adam Fox the, jerseys. Be, never got beyond the Messier jerseys. Mean, he's a Long Island guy, Adam or, Fox. Or Adam Graves or Rick. Yeah, there's a lot of old jerseys. Brother. A, lot of, a lot of old, uh, worn out, weather beaten jerseys. A lot of tears on him, too. Yeah, well, as well as should. <laughs> so anyway, so lots of things going on in the um, NHL and in, in the playoff-wise. I mean, all four number one seeds are still in the playoffs, which is... This is true, brother. Good, not, good call. Not, not a bad thing. Uh, whether the well, NHL... It's, it's a bad thing if you were rooting against the number one seeds. Well, yeah, it, I know, you know what you're saying. You know, does the NHL want an upset? Yeah, you know, that's the thing. You know, do you want your best teams, or, you, or do you like the upset which carries people in who maybe aren't watching the playoffs? Well, I mean, if you, if you look at like, look at it last year, the Islanders were the number four seed. They beat the Pittsburgh Penguins, the number one seed, and, and people saw that coming. I mean, that was that was it was on uh, I'll just say a website, um, and and they had some of their writers say, who, who do you which number one seed do you see being upset? And you know, they the, the call was the Pittsburgh Penguins were, right. were were the number you know that was the number one seed. Plus plus they knew the Islanders were were playing well, and they expected the Islanders to do well. So, you know, from that standpoint, it wasn't necessarily a shocker uh, that the Islanders beat him because the Islanders had gone to the Eastern Conference Finals the season before. So, um, but, you know, I mean, we're, we're looking at the, the, the series that, that well, I, first of all, let's talk about the Rangers just to, just to get this in. Um, they, they get the goal in the third period, and then Panarin scores. It was four or something in over, overtime. It was it was a pretty quick goal for overtime. Overtimes tend to be if you don't get a goal in the first maybe like five or six minutes, then you're going to triple overtime. It's it just seems like there's not there's no real middle ground in overtime. But what the Penguins did is something that they also did in Game Six was take take they took a couple of stupid penalties. And they gave the Rangers the advantage. Now, for for a team that's playing with their third string goalie, uh, taking dumb penalties is uh, should be right in the forefront of your mind. Don't do that. We can't afford right, to do this right. with with our third string goalie. And and yet they did. I mean, they they. I don't want to say they handed the series to the Rangers, but the Penguins should have won this game last night. And and I'm I'm sorry to say that to Ranger fans. I know Ranger fans will be upset about that, and 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 probably will disagree with me. But the Penguins were leading after two periods. You got to lock that down, and and the Penguins didn't do what they should have done, which was play clean hockey, play good hockey, and play defensive hockey. And they didn't do it. And and so as far as I'm concerned, the Penguins have nobody to blame but themselves for being you know being. Uh, Today, today will be a baggy day in Pittsburgh because the players will be will be loading all of the equipment out of their lockers uh, over over at the, at the arena over there and going home. And they they didn't have to do that. And the Rangers, the Rangers, I didn't think the Rangers played all that great in this series. It was a tough series, tough series, good series, entertaining series, but. The Rangers should have taken care of business before Game Seven, and especially right. before and, the, and the third period of Game won, Seven. They should have won ga- Game One too. So that was uh, it was overtime. It was like yeah, you know, you know, know. seventy something saves. I mean, it was it was it was a, a classic NHL playoff game. Yeah. I'll give them that. It was entertaining. I watched I watched it until the end. So three overtimes. It was yeah. you, you're tired by that point. It's late, but when you when you lose that game, I mean, that's another reason to me that Pittsburgh should have won because they won that game. And, and they did what they had to do and, and, and got that win. But, you know, Crosby going down with the injury hurt them, obviously. Um, and, 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 you know, we'll see. We'll see what the Rangers can do. Uh, we'll see if, uh, you know, the uh, – what's his name? Uh, Shesterkin, the goalie. I mean, a lot of people are saying he should win the Vezina Trophy as, as the best goalie in the NHL. He didn't have a good series 
uh, played better yesterday, obviously because they won. But you know, this this is a guy who he, you know, he, in, in the middle of the series, games what three and four or whatever, not good at all. So you know, he needs to be that guy. He needs to be the Vesna guy as opposed to Mr. Ordinary. So you know, we'll see what happens with the Hurricanes. Hurricanes are a better team than the Penguins. Um, you know, I, I was I was thinking about this during the series. I really used to dislike the Rangers a lot. I still do. You know, and and I've I've kind of I, I with this series I've kind of gotten past that I think a little bit. I, not that I'm a big fan of this team because I I I'll, I will freely admit I do not follow the Rangers very closely. I, I I know I know who their top guys are. I I know why why they play winning hockey or how they play winning hockey. But if the Rangers are on, I'm not. I'm if something else is on, I'll watch something else. I'm not. You know, if the Islanders are on, I'm watching the Islanders because I care about the Islanders. But when the Rangers are on, I mean, first of all, I think mo- a lot of Ranger fans are annoying people. Well, that I, you know, again, sorry if you don't like it, call in, yell at me. I don't care. Uh, but I want to hear want to hear a story about a fan of my, a friend of mine is a Ranger fan. Go ahead, bro. Go for ago. it. Tell us a story. This story happened, time. People. This used to be uh, this happened years ago. The Island, Rangers lost in the playoffs, and uh, I see him the next day at work, and he just looks, no names. No, we're not putting names. No, no. Not a first name. No, I don't want to do that. Be, <laughs> All right, he'll he'll know who he is. Let's and let's it, call him. Just call him for, for just just for just for, so people can identify. Let's call him Mess. No, actually, that's pretty close to his name. <laughs> so anyway, uh, he I knew the Rangers lost, and I was very happy. And, and he just comes up to me and, and tells me to uh, uh, basically to screw off. Wait, who did they lose to? I forgot. It was, it was, so it, it wasn't like they lost to the Islanders? No, it wasn't to the Islanders. Okay, all right, no. go ahead. And, and he basically just told me to screw off. Um, but See, it, that's what I'm saying. But in more colorful language. And I hadn't even said a word. That was the funny part. I hadn't said a word. I hadn't say, well, you know, sorry about those Rangers, you know. You that's know, they, a typical Ranger fan right there. Yeah, that's so the pro- was, And that's the problem with Ranger fans. I want to say it was the year before they won the the, the, the Stanley Cup. That, that goes back. So that's, that, they won the Cup in 94. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, Ranger fan, they, they now make fun of the Islanders fans. But let's face it, Rangers haven't won the Cup in, in 26 years. I know. Now, you know that whole messy thing. It, I know. It, I know. It, it kind of feels like it wasn't that long ago. I know. It's a long a time know. ago. I know. I know the Islanders haven't won a cup since 1980, but it's not like it's, it's not like 83. I'm sorry, but it's, it's not like uh, it's not like the Rangers are, are, you know, that much more recent. No, and uh, that's always the fun part about the whole thing. And uh, you know, now Ranger fans chant 1983, and and. Maybe some Islander fans will chant 1994, but... Long time ago. It's a long time. For both. For both. That's not a one-way street. No. I mean, it's not 1940, but come on. One of the great chants of all time, let's be honest. Yes. So anyway, uh, quickly, the Panthers are playing the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning in the Atlantic Division. That brother, I'm telling you, let me, let me just stop you there. That, to me, is going to be a very entertaining series. Because the Panthers led the NHL this year, 122 points. That's a massive number of yep. points. Uh, and the Lightning, obviously, are the two-time reigning Stanley Cup champions. Uh, you know, here, here's the deal with the Lightning. I'm not even sure how many series in a row that they've won now, but they are not even halfway or barely halfway to the Islanders' record of 19 straight playoff series. Right. That's how. That's how. I mean, they need to win two more cups plus. Right. Right. To 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 even just equal that record. That's how far away the Tampa Bay Lightning are from. As far as I'm concerned, one of the greatest well, records in hockey history. Well, that's why the Islanders have the greatest dynasty in hockey, because yes. they won 19 straight series. But that's that's going to be a fun series to watch. Yes, it will. I think you're right. Also, the Colorado Avalanche playing St. Louis Blues, one versus three. And Calgary Flames, number one versus the number two Edmonton Oilers. Well, Canada. They, well, say, Canada. they say Calgary in Canada, by the way. Oh, they do? Yeah. My man, yeah. Kelly Askew, he's, he's, a, he's a, a Calgary guy. And I used to, always used to call it Calgary. And then when I would hear the Canadian guys on, on the RPI hockey team talking, he was always Calgary. And I'm like, okay. what, the hell, what the hell is that about Calgary? Well, you got, you got all Florida thing in the Atlantic Division. Yep. You got Pacific Division, all Canada. This is going to be interesting. And Canada is going to eat this up. They love all Canada stuff You know, when it comes to hockey. They just, they just love it. They don't care who it is, really. They just want an all Canada thing. Exactly. So, so. The, the, the Canadians are happy because they, at least one Canadian team will be going to the Western Conference Final. Right. So we'll see what happens there. Okay, let's get to the Islanders. Last week, right when we got off the air, like we said, Barry Trotz was announced that he was not going to be the coach anymore of the New York Islanders. Well, Lou Lamorello actually announced there's, it. There's still a lot of mystery around that, by the way. And we didn't know what happened. We did a little speculation, we but not much. <laughs> and a week later, we still don't know what's going on. 
Lou, of course, keeps everything close to his vest. He does not give away anything. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I know Lou Lamorello has this great image, but you know what? Is yeah, when when does he take less credit? You know, Barry Trotz was a very good coach for the Islanders. He was. And Played the perfect system for this team. This is not a high-scoring team. No. Well, he, I mean, but, but Barry's a defensive coach anyway. Right. But this is not a team of 40-goal scorers that he made 20-goal scorers because all they had to do was worry about defense. That's not. That's, this team was a perfect pit, fit for Barry Trotz's style. Right. So. But one thing, you know, we, we if you remember Al Arbor, he was a defensive coach. But you know what? He also had guys who could score. You had your bossies and your trottiers and, and a lot of other guys who knew how to score, too. Well, they just weren't defensive guys always on the back end of their skates. So... Um, yeah, those Islanders team had more more two way players than, yeah, than which the current this, group. This does. team doesn't have that, so uh, there's not much going on with it. It's it's kind of sad um, that they have not announced yet what's going on. They yet there's been no well, real interviews. Yeah, there have no, there have brother there have. I, I, I got nothing, that. I got nothing that here. major. Nothing. No no announcements, so to speak. Yeah, but Lou Lou doesn't do announcements, brother. Lou's not going to sit here and, and and bare his soul and tell you everything that's going on. I mean, here here's the quote. And, and, and this was from uh, ESPN.com. When, when he was asked why he decided to fire Trotz, Lamorello said, and I'm quoting, I would rather not get into any of the reasons. But he did specify that, quote, this decision was not primarily made on this season. So that just, to me, adds more mystery to it. That's even stupid. Because if he fired him because of this season, that would be, that would be just stupid. But... You know, given given all the circumstances of the season, we talked about this last week on on the on the FTP B, B the bonus section. But this season was a disaster in 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 not in the hockey sense, although it wasn't a good season from hockey sense. No. But when you're talking about starting the game with 13 games on or starting the season with 13 games on the road, the the COVID disaster that the NHL forced on the Islanders and and basically handed them about eight or nine losses. Uh, because they had to play Bridgeport, because most of their guys were 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 out out because of COVID, so that was a double barrel. And then they finished with thirty three games in sixty days, which is an insane pace that they they never should have been playing that many games in in such a short period of time. So there well, were a lot should, of things but, that conspired for the Islanders uh, to but, have a bad season. But we should also say that the second half of the season was much better. They were over five hundred at the end of the season. Um, yeah, they, they played better, but they, this this was a team that was never going to make the playoffs. Just I mean, I no after we, the we, first half, you know that nothing. It would, I mean, you'd have to literally win every game in the second right, half, right? Exactly, happen. and that was never obviously was never going to happen. You no. can't you can't play at that pace in the NHL. No, so I I, I don't know. I, I've never been. I I know Lamorello's won what three Stanley Cups. I've just never been a fan of his. I I, I always I don't thought. Know why. Guy, the guy, he's, he's good at he's good at his job. I'll give him that. You might not like what he does, and and he is known for changing coaches. He's not a guy. Yeah. He's he's never going to have a coach for ten years. That's well, that's not his not well, his style. He he feels like like players need a change in voice. Every except for him, of course. Well, but he he he'll, he'll never stick with a coach for more than five. But or it four also, years. you know, the problem that I think is this is where you know, Larry Robinson, you know, was fired a year and a half after he won the Stanley Cup. Um, what? So, but anyway, brother, the the when when you when you're talking about Barry Trotz, right? Four seasons, record of 152, 102, and 34, 28 and 21 in the playoffs. The Islanders, the Islanders, like we said, they went to, they went to the um, Eastern Conference Finals two years in a row, twice, both times lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning, um, the, the, and off season wise, the Islanders are in decent shape. They're not in great shape. Um, they have 18 players under contract and about just over, it says, $12 million in salary cap space. Again, that's according to ESPN.com. So can they get some players? Yeah. That, to me, $12 million is either three decent players or two two good players. Right. And Lou, Lou has said he wants a, a puck-carrying defenseman. He wants an offensive-minded defenseman. That's going to cost money. So that that could that that could wind up being a six or seven million dollar player right there easily. So that means five million or so for one more player. Because if if you go for for you know two two players for two and a half million each, 
You're getting fourth line guys. That's that's just NHL economics these days. Uh, so, you know, I mean, the whole thing about a new voice that that was Lou's thing. He, he wants a new voice yeah. for the Islanders. Like I said, well, except for Lou. Well, but you know, a new voice is fine. But what about what about the new new strategy? What about new tactics? Um, you know, Matthew Barzell had had something like what sixty points this year for the Islanders. He was he was either leading scorer or one of their leading scorers. Matthew Barzell, with the current setup and the current roster, is not going to turn into a hundred point guy. He's just not. They, he he needs a sniper next to him, either on the left wing or the right wing. I don't care what wing it is, but he needs a guy who is going to score. Forty or more goals, or even fifty. Right. Kreider, Kreider got fifty this year, so why why can't why can't an Islander get fifty? Uh, so, you know, where is that guy? Is that guy on the roster? Is, is Oliver Wallstrom that guy? I don't I don't think he is. I think Oliver Wallstrom can be a thirty or thirty five goal scorer in, in the league. I don't think he's a fifty goal scorer. But you know, where where does that guy come from? And you know, how much is he going to cost? Because he he's not in the system now. It's not like they can just, you know, it's not like they have somebody in the minor leagues who can give you that kind of production next season. Right. They don't. You know what gets me also is, that, you know, John Ledecky has been pretty much out there as a as co-owner of this team. He's he's the he's the guy who talks to everyone. You know, the other guy never, well, if he's out there, we don't know about it really. Well, the other guy apparently is the guy making the decisions. Ledecky is, is has, he, he's, 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 he's kind of the face, so to speak, and, and right. the voice. But the other guy, from from what I heard, and this was a little behind the scenes stuff, but you know, um, Lou, the only people that Lou talked about this with, because there was apparently a story, I think in the Athletic. We gotta be careful. Week, we, I don't like to speculate. Well, but there was apparently, but that was the story. The story was speculation yeah, that no. the players went to Lou, or or at least one player went to Lou after the season and said and complained about the system and it was too defensive, and you know, I mean, let's face it. Defensive systems don't get players paid, right? Because but, your your point totals are going to go down, your Lou, goal totals Lou, are going to go down. But Lou is known as a defensive guy too. Yeah, but know? so what? I mean, general managers aren't aren't on the bench, so you, you know. I mean, he's going to help put together the team. He's probably and and he picked a defensive coach. But when a Barry Trotz come, becomes available, that was a no brainer. Of course, any 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 anybody any, anybody who 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 knew what a puck was would have said, yeah, let's hire Barry Trotz. I mean, it was a great hire because it was an easy hire. You know, here, here is the Capitals hot, fired him and, and basically presented him to the Islanders. Here you go. Have a coach. Thank you. Hey, if right now, the next coach is, is certainly not nearly as clear as as hiring Barry Trotz. I have no idea who the, the Islanders are. The Islanders were one game last year of making the Stanley Cup Finals. which One goal. One goal, which most likely they would have won. We know that. Um, if they had won last year, I wonder how the bitching <laughs> sessions would be about... You know Barry Trotz after they'd won a Stanley there, Cup. There wouldn't have been. There, I mean, I'm sure there was bitching this year because obviously they didn't make the playoffs. So that that will lead to to bitching. But again, with with all of of the the uh, series of events that conspired against the Islanders this season, and that's why I'm surprised that that Trotz got fired. Um, although, you know, with Lou saying the decision was not primarily made on this season. I, it, I mean, I, it, I, if I find that hard to believe I can. because Trotz's, Trotz's track record with the Islanders before that was three years, three playoff appearances, two two appearances in the Eastern Conference Finals. You don't fire that coach. No. Like firing that coach is stupid. So when when you have what I considered to be a throwaway season because of all the other outside things that were were happening to this team, I, I, obviously I looked at it as a throwaway season. Uh, obviously, Lou Lamorello doesn't regard it as a throwaway season because it it had to have some sort of an impact on his decision. Now, is is it is this a Lou a Lou thing where he says, "All right, I don't think any coach should have the job for more than four or five years"? Maybe so. Barry Trotz had one more year left on his contract, right? So you know he he'll get paid. And there was also some speculation because Barry Barry missed a few games um, during the season because there was some sort of family health issue going on. Uh, that let's let, let's not talk about that. But the issue was there, and some people were speculating that well, you know, maybe Barry asked to be fired. And first of all, nobody has ever asked to be fired in their life. No. And secondly, if if that was the case, then they would have just they would have just said, said right, they, well, they would have number one they would have said it, and number two they would have just worked out an, an arrangement 
and say, all right, like a, a contract buyout, and say, all right, you know, Barry's leaving. Right. He's done. And Barry would have been out there with the press saying, well, I decided to take it. Right, exactly. Barry would have explained it, as opposed to letting this whole thing just kind of kind of dangle and, and you know, every, everybody's guessing and, and nobody's yeah, really saying that's, anything. I, that's just like what Lou does. That's one thing I don't like about Lou. But, hey, he's won three Stanley Cups. So. Right. Anyway, let's quickly talk. Uh, let's move over to uh, baseball. Uh, the Mets and the Yankees. Um, How about those Yankees? Two, two of the best teams in baseball right now. The Yankees are the best team in baseball right now. The Mets are slowing down. Mets are slowing down, but they're still on top of the NL East. Yeah, but you know, come um, on. let's let's par- let's let's put that in perspective. If you who who who, in the, who, in the, who else in the National League East is over five hundred? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Good answer, brother. Good answer. I don't care. I, 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 th- I, said, I said who who what, what other team in the National League East is over five hundred? None. None exactly. I'll take it. And I'm and I'm not I'm not I'm not sitting here poking fun at the Mets. The Mets the Mets have had a, a very good start. I have no complaints with the Mets. They're twenty three and thirteen, but the rest of the division it, it looks right now so far it looks like garbage. Well, so I mean we'll 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 probably see something from the Braves at some point. Acuna is is is, is hurt again now. Uh, he's got some kind of a, a thigh or quad. Something's going on with him with his legs. Uh, and, and they're going to get back Mike Soroka at some point, uh, probably next month, some, somewhere late June or early July. And if he's healthy, he, he's, he's, a, he's an ace. He's a stud pitcher. Right. So that would be better than a trade as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, how, how, much, how much does that allow the Braves to catch up to the Mets? And, and can the Braves repeat what they did last year? You know, I mean, Matt Olson is a great player at first base for the Braves, but he's, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have the leadership skills of Freddie Freeman because Freddie Freeman was there forever. Well, the Mets are the number one team in the National League right now, brother. Uh, in, in, in the East, yeah. No, in the whole league. Check the Dodgers, brother. No, I'm looking at them right now. Check 636. 636 percentage, Mets is 639. Oh, my God. 23 and 13, the Mets. 21 and 12, the Dodgers. All right, All right good. So, Go with that, brother. I will. And the Brewers are twenty-two and thirteen, six twenty-nine. Brewers are good. Don't sleep on the Brewers. That's a that's a really good and starting the Yankees, pitching rotation. Twenty-five and nine oh, percentage oh. is seven thirty-five. Brr. But the Houston Astros, brother, twenty-three and twelve, six fifty-seven. Cheaters. So they are cheaters, but they're in first place right now. I I see their show all all the time on uh, what is it uh, VH1. Cheaters. Really? Okay. Do they bang on garbage spells in that show? Um, no, they do something else. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. So anyway, so you know, it, right now, hey, like I said, the you know, Mets, you say are falling down a little bit, but they're well. I mean, they they've slowed down a little bit. I mean, I, I think that's obvious. They're four and four in their last eight. Uh, they actually finally lost a series. So you know, I mean, it's it's a little bit of a regression. I'm not sitting here last saying the sky games. is falling because it's not. They're last they're comfortably games, in first brother, place. They're five and five. That's not good. Oh, well, yeah, it's it's it's. Like I said, teams are going to have lulls. You're not you're not going to play 650 ball all season. It doesn't happen. The Yankees are 25 and nine right now. Do I think that's going to last for the entire season? No. Absolutely not. No. I mean, right now I'd be I'd be thrilled if the Yankees won 105 games. I'd be thrilled. But right now they're on a pace to win something like 125. It's not going to happen. No, no. So you know, be happy. And and you know, the Mets are the Mets are playing the Cardinals. They they start a, a series at City Field tonight. Um, you know, they, last time when the, when the Mets went to St. Louis, and and I I never did verify this, but I heard it, so I'm I'm I have to assume it happened because you, because Steve Cohen, let's face it, he's a little crazy, he's a little out there. But there was a a rumor that went around, and I don't even know he might have, he he might have posted it on Twitter for all I know. I don't really I don't really check his account very often. But the word was that if any Mets player hit a home run off of Steven Matz, that they were going to get a car. Wow. Because that's, that's, how, that's how angry Steve Cohen was with Matz, because Cohen thought he had an agreement. He thought they had something worked out. He was all set that they were going to have a press conference, make the announcement, and you know do, do the thing. And last minute, Steven Matz... All of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to sign a four-year deal with the Cardinals. And if you remember, brother, Steve Cohen actually took to Twitter to trash Stephen Matz's agent. Absolutely trashed him. Publicly. 
which you know is is it really a move that 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 wins you uh, wins you favor with uh, with the agent crowd? So yeah, but you know, you know from, what? You know what? From brother? from that standpoint, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You know what, bro? Get on mic, bro. I'm, get on mic. I'm, I'm just getting something, brother. Shut up. <laughs> anyway, yeah, tell me, shut up, because nobody can hear you. I can hear me. <laughs> Everyone can hear me, even if I'm off mic. If George Steinbrenner, which who became nice little you know grandpa to George, had Twitter in his time, would have been a horror show. Um, imagine horror show. The, the the lack of phone calls to Bill Madden and the rest of the the Yankee coverage team for all the newspapers in New York City and New Jersey. I, I'm I'm going to stop you there. Steinbrenner on Twitter would have been Trump. He would have been Trump. It would have been that much of a disaster. I agree. I don't. I don't know if he would have gotten suspended from Twitter, because Steinbrenner would have. He, he Steinbrenner's tweets would have all been complaining and bashing players. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be the outright lies that Trump was tweeting constantly. But Steinbrenner's Twitter feed would, would have would have been a, a horror show. Right. I agree. An absolute horror. So thank 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 God there was no Twitter back then. And and thank God that the the Stein, writers Stein, Steinbrenner had PR. How many PR guys did he hire? And, and there was probably at least twenty of them. But yeah, you know, as as when we talked to Bill Madden a couple of times, he you know he he sometimes expected those calls from George Steinbrenner. Of course. So that was like a you know part of being a a beat writer or a columnist. Yeah, for the Yankee, Yankees. Yankee beat writer was they, they were they were never off. They never off. Game they game would be over. They'd be on. They'd be on their way home, and they 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 get a phone call at home. There were no cell phones in those days. Imagine, imagine if there were cell phones. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean that that would have made it worse too. Yeah, had so, it recorded and everything. Th- thankfully, there was there was no the technology back then didn't didn't allow yeah. Steinbrenner to be become even more of a menace. That's true. Anyway, we should say, brother, that uh, the Yankees are twenty five and nine. This is the fourth team to get twenty five wins in thirty four games in baseball history. In bro. baseball let's, history let's, let's... and. The last three to do that went on to win the World Series. That's right. So, How about that? Something to look forward to. Pretty impressive. Friends. By the way, brother, how are those Red Sox doing? Really bad. <laughs> really bad. They're in last place. They're below the Baltimore Orioles. How funny is that? I think that's hilarious. The Red Sox are 13-21. and 21. They are 12 games behind the New York Yankees. And the Orioles are 14-21. and 21. They're a half a game ahead of the Red Sox. You know, it's it's funny. I, I would hate to be a Baltimore Royals fan. You know? No, I, I tell you what, they got a bright future. Yeah, but that's they, what they, they, said they, for they years. have. They have no. They got they got three or four guys in the minor leagues right now who are are elite prospects. Yeah, well. So the Orioles will. I'm I mean, so, I'm not I, saying they're going to be, you know, competing for an American League East title, but they will be in. In I'm going to say in three years, the Baltimore Orioles will will be playing above 500 baseball. But it's going to take. It's still going to take some time. Right. But they have. They have some. Some very. If you go to. If you yeah, go to MLB.com and right. check. Check the top one hundred. They're my, all over. The place. My problem with that has always been. Well, okay, they're doing good in the minor leagues. Will they do good in the, in the major leagues? Not always. Not and, and I'll give. I'll, I'll give you a prime example. Steve Balboni. No. <laughs> what? What? You don't remember Steve Balboni? Oh just shut up with Steve Balboni. I'm, I'm talking current. I'm talking about... You're talking a guy from 30 years ago. He's one of the guys. Oh, stop. He was not, did not really do good. Uh, uh, here, here's a guy. Here's a majors. name that everybody knows. Jared Kalanick. Okay. Who was was the guy that the Mets traded in, in the Robinson Cano and, and uh, Edwin Diaz trade. Okay. And so far, he's still young. He's still only 22, but he can't hit. Mm-hmm. His average is something like 170. Now, I am certainly not saying that Jared Kalanick is 20, 22 years old is a bust because this kid hit everywhere. And let's face it, Major League pitching is the toughest. That's the toughest, for as far as I'm concerned, it's the toughest jump in sports to go from minor league, you know, AAA pitching to go to Major Leagues. Sure. So I'm not just going to sit here and say Jared Kalanick is never going to be a star in because in, he's been a star at every level he's ever played at. But right now... He is a guy who was a top ten prospect, who who is. And I'm talking in all of baseball, not just for for Seattle. Top ten prospect in all of baseball who is just not getting the job done. Mm-hmm. So he he needs a little more time. But that's a guy. But the the, the Orioles, they they have they have pitching prospects. They have the uh, catching prospect uh, Adley Adley Rooksman, I think is, is how it's pronounced. Stud catcher. Uh, so they are going to be very good up the middle and. 
again, three years, they, they'll be playing above 500. I, I, they're not going to be contending, but at least they'll be respectable. Right. And Whereas in the last seven years, they haven't been that. Speaking of Robinson Cano, he is signed with the San Diego Padres. Of course, the Mets waived him a, a more than a week ago. Pa- Padres pay Cano the minimum, major league minimum, and the Mets are re- are responsible for the remainder of the salary. Thank you, Brody Von Wagner. Um, but that's why with Kalanick not performing, that trade right now, right now, looks better for the Mets. Mm. But, and, and that's because Diaz has returned to form. His first Diaz's first year with the Mets, he really wasn't good. So the trade looked terrible because everybody said, "Oh, Kellenick's going to be an All Star." Well, right now Kellenick isn't looking like that guy, and you know, I mean the Mets are still eating forty or forty five million dollars of Cano's contract, which Mets fans don't care about, which is fine. But it's still you could have used Jared Kellenick to get better players. And that's that when when you talk about when you talk about the, the spend, it's not just dropping ca- cash on Robinson Cano. It's about how much better could you have done with a team that wa- would have wanted Jared Kellenick, your number one prospect. And and I, I, they gave up somebody else in that trade too, who was pretty good. But that that uh, level of minor leaguers would have gotten you better players. You don't you don't trade. That level of player for a closer, you can you can always you can always turn somebody into a closer. Closers are not, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm not talking Mariano Rivera here, but you can always find a closer. Dave Rigetti. Yeah, exactly. Turn a starter into a closer. Turn a minor. Everybody throws 98 nowadays. It's not. It's not. It's not. You know, like Goose Gossage back in the day was an aberration. Nowadays, every every team has three or four guys that throws harder than Goose Gossage did. So it's not hard to find a guy who throws a 98 or 99. Mm. So that part of it, that's what I'm talking about when I say the spend of it. Because they could have done better in a trade. They could have gotten a better player, a more elite player. Somebody who would have more of an impact than a closer. Yeah. Well, So anyway, let's go, Mets. Um, James McCann, brother, let's not forget, uh, is out for approximately six weeks. He's going to have surgery to uh, repair a... A broken hamate bone. Now I didn't see this, obviously, but but a hamate bone when that breaks, it's almost always because he got hit by a pitch. So I'm assuming that, that McCann got hit by a pitch at some point, or maybe caught a foul ball off, off of you know while he was catching. Right. But usually that's a hit by pitch kind of an injury because the hamate bone. If 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 you check your your hand, like like if you go to like karate chop something. And then like the bone at the bo- at the very bottom of, of your hand where your hand goes into your wrist uh, at, on the outside that's that's the hamate bone. So when that gets hit and you're holding the bat, that's that's Ouch. the bone that's that's usually kind of kind of protruding a little bit. And if you get if you get hit there, it's going to break, and they need to do, do surgery to, to connect everything back together. Yeah. So he's out for six weeks, and um, uh, Patrick uh, Mazika is has been uh, recalled from Triple A Syracuse, and the Mets Mets also have put uh, Tyler McGill on the ten uh, or actually on the fifteen day uh, injured list uh, with biceps tendonitis. He's been pitching well yes, until his last start, but he yes. probably had some biceps tendonitis, which is probably why the start didn't go so well. Probably we're going to take a break right now. You're listening to ninety point three WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. The show you're listening to is from the press box. I am Rob Leonard. He is Tim Leonard. Give us a call. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. Radio It's Big Ed inviting you to join me Mondays from 10 till noon for the Good Gold Show. We've got the greatest hits of all time, all your faves of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, a whole lot of fun, and we'll keep you informed. Plus, we'll take your requests and your dedications. Playing favorites. So join me Mondays from 10 till noon for Good Gold on 90.3 WHPC, available on the Odyssey, iHeart, and WHPC apps. Wow. Okay. Yo. Tell your friends. Check it out. Check it out.
I was just sitting there befuddled, and that's the word of the day today, folks, is befuddled. Oh, I thought you were about to give out the wordle, wordle of the day. Oh, no. He's playing right wordle now. right now. How would anybody get this? It starts with a T, apparently, and ends with an S. Don't! People get very mad. Oh, who you, cares? You're spoiling I didn't get it. it yet. I have T in the right spot. It's the first letter. I want to write this. Then O is it's in the, third the wrong letter. spot. O is the third letter. And then S, E are the fourth and fifth letter. So I just need the second letter. It's got to be a vowel, right? No. Those, yeah. yeah those. Oh my god, you guys are so <laughs> smart. Let's go, I got it! Yeah. What do you win now? Win now? <laughs> Nothing, but I do share it on all my social media. <laughs> 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 Financial Morning Madhouse. Weekday mornings from 7 to 9. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. <laughs> Shake off the realities of the day, broaden your musical horizons, and embrace the diversity every Monday afternoon at 5 for two hours of Revelations. The show offers a potently unique collection of music with an emphasis on themes and rock rarities, an occasional tour de force of blues and soul mixed with compelling sets of folk and folk rock. I'm Steve Kay, and I've got the perfect soundtrack for your drive home every Monday afternoon at 5 on Revelations, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. The views expressed on air are not necessarily those of WHPC, its management, or Nassau Community College. Responsible opposing viewpoints will be considered by emailing them to whpc at ncc.edu or by mail at whpc One Education Drive, Garden City, New York, 11530. Thanks for listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Uh, uh, uh. This is the original brother, Tommy James and the Shondells. Money, money. This is from the press box right here on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College, streaming at nccradio.org among many places, including Odyssey, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio app. And our show becomes a podcast later on at Spreaker. And Spotify and everywhere else where you get podcast. So just if you heard, heard, you, heard you in Ohio on Friday, brother. I did not know that. I was uh, we we tuned in for about about thirty seconds, and then we lost the internet. Oh, okay. <laughs> By the way, brother, we did hear you. Don't forget about the rock overdose every Monday and Wednesday. I'm sorry, Monday and Friday at eleven p.m. and Wednesdays at six p.m. You can truly never overdose on rock music. Listen for classic rock from the 60s to the 90s and call in your requests, too. That's Rock Overdose, Monday and Fridays at 11 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. right here on 90.3 WHPC. Glad, glad you corrected, brother. I was, I was going to, about to say, doesn't Rock Overdose follow Beatles songs? It does on See Fridays. You. There you go. So, Anyway, brother wanted to talk a couple of more things about the Yankees. He's uh, he's obsessed with Nestor Cortez. Nestor. Nestor. Nasty Nestor. Is that his name? Nasty Nestor Cortez. Is, is this a Tim Leonard thing? The Nestor, in my pronunciation, by the way. Is is it nasty? Is that your thing? That's it. That's his. That's his nickname. Nasty. It's not from Tim Leonard. No. Oh, okay. That's it's, it's it's legit. First of all, his his final line from Sunday: eight innings, three hits, one run, zero walks. Seven strikeouts, 99 pitches. Okay. It's a, per- it's a perfect outing. Then why didn't they leave him in for a complete because, game? Because you could tell in the eighth inning he, he was, he was, he was not, not where, you, where, where you wanted him to be. He gave up a home run, gave up a, a fly ball to the warning track. He, he was pretty much done. But he gave them that eighth inning. So it's one less inning for the bullpen. It was, it was an outstanding start. And we need to talk about this guy because... 36th round draft pick. He is the pride of Hialeah, Florida. He actually has a stitched on his on his glove, Hialeah, because okay. he wants to remember where he came from. Yes, he does have the greatest mustache in professional sports, but Nestor is so much more. This guy is an ace. He is a legitimate ace, and people still treat him like he's some kind of sideshow. But every start he has pitched this season has been quality. And he might not be getting wins, 
because the Yankees sometimes will score late, but his ERA this season is 1.35. That's absurd. Okay. That's, All right. That's he, not a bad he, thing. Is, he is, I mean, he's the main reason. First of all, Garrett Cole had three bad starts to start the season. Garrett Cole, his last four starts, has been, has been lights out. He's been the guy. The guy you're paying $36 million a season. Nestor has come out of nowhere. And he is giving the Yankees a quality start every time he goes out. And it's gotten to the point since the second half of last season where every time this guy starts, the Yankees should expect to win the game. Now, obviously, it's not going to happen, but how confident can a team be when now you have this guy who came out of nowhere. And, and and that pitching was the problem for me before the season started with the Yankees. Right. You had Cole. You had you had you know, Severino was a fingers crossed kind of a thing because he was coming back from the Tommy John surgery. And, and you didn't know what, you know, you know you, yes, he's, he's, he's a great pitcher. He's got a, he's got very good pedigree. He had, had good seasons. He was like number, he was third in the Cy Young voting a, a couple years ago. But he's coming off a major surgery. You don't know what he's going to be until he shows you again that he can be the guy. You know, Jordan Montgomery, to me, is always going to be a fourth or fifth starter. And Jamison Tyon was good in the second half last season, but another guy who was coming off a major surgery. And I expected him to be a little better this year. I, I, I didn't expect him to be very good this year, which is pretty much what he's been. Okay. But Nestor Cortez, this guy, right now, he's an all-star. And people, people are going to laugh because he's not a big name. But it's more about people need to adjust their thinking about Nestor Cortez as opposed to Nestor Cortez adjusting anything. He's, he's going out and doing a job every day or every game. Every five days, you're getting, you might not be getting eight innings, three hits in one run, but you're getting something similar. You're getting seven innings and, and four hits in one run. You, you're getting just insane performances every time. And this is a, a, one of the main reasons why the Yankees are 25-9. and nine. It's because this guy goes out and he's, he's not blowing guys away. He, his, his fastball is probably 93-94. It certainly, certainly is not, you know, is not a blowing, blowing, uh, you know, blowing gas on a radar gun, but it's... It's effective. He locates. And, and and he's added the cutter, which he didn't have when he was drafted, and that's become an, a remarkably effective pitch for him. It, 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 it's almost it, – the cutter has done for Nesta Cortez almost what it, what it did for Mariano Rivera. And I know some people would probably say that's blasphemy that I, that I put them in the same sentence, but it's become the effective pitch. Right. He throws two different kinds of cutters. So, and, and opposing hitters can't hit, hit either one of them. So, if, 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 if he can get himself mentally to a place where he's going he's gonna to say to himself, look, I'm going seven or eight innings every time I pitch, and I'm not going to be a five or six inning guy. And that's just a matter of pitch. Like, last, like yesterday, like you said, 99 pitches, that's, to me, that should be expected. And the fact that he got eight innings, he didn't look good in the eighth inning, though. He, he, he really, he was getting hit. But could he have finished that game yesterday? Sure he could have. Yeah, he should have. But they told him, once he finished the eighth, I'm sure Booney told him, you're done. But then Joey Gallo hit a home run, a two-run home run in the bottom of the eighth because it was 3-1, then it turned into 5-1. Could they have sent him back out there? Sure they could have. But you know what? They got, they got plenty of bullpen guys. They got to rest all but one of them yesterday. Clay Holmes finished up the ninth. Thank you very much. Here's another win. Okay. Remember now, the, now, now, uh, remember now! Remember, everyone, the Yankees are the number one team in baseball. Right? Now, the, now the Yankees play uh, play the Orioles. Another three wins there. Oh, could be. Anyway, for those who don't know, we are a soccer friendly show, and Timmy wanted to play this at the, talk about this at the end of the show. And a lot going on. Let's, soccer, let's brother. talk about it now. Get it out of the way. But of course, we always talk European stuff. You know, we don't talk about the Red Bulls as much. Well, you know, that's put it up on the computer, brother. We'll talk about it. I, I don't know why I have to explain this to you. When I point, that's what you do. MLS. I don't know, Tim. Say it. Say. I, I shouldn't have to say it, brother. I, I people, can't on the radio, people listening to I the radio don't read. need to hear me tell you what to do. I can't hear your brain <sighs> think, brother. 
because it's God knows what's going on. Anyway, like, brother, like anyway a, let me talk about it's soccer. Like a mouse let me talk about a soccer wheel. instead of talking about you complaining. All right. First of all, FA Cup. Since since well, we'll start with non Tottenham stuff, brother. FA Cup. Liverpool defeated Chelsea in 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 the FA Cup final on Saturday. Uh, really, not not a good match. But after 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 uh, a, a goalless draw, Liverpool won in penalty kicks six to five. Kind of kind of an anticlimactic final. When when a final goes to penalty kicks, that's no, that's not the way to decide it. I don't care what kind of what kind of tournament it is. Even if it's the World Cup. I don't. I'm not a fan of deciding finals with penalty kicks. Um, so Liverpool now got a break on Sunday because West Ham. Drew with Manchester City. That's first place Manchester City, the team that Liverpool is chasing. So now Liverpool plays Southampton on Tuesday with a chance to pull within one point of Manchester City again. Those were the two points that Liverpool, they bottled, brother. Bottled is the word that the British use. Uh, in, 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 in America, we say choked. Uh, they choked away to Tottenham when, when they had the 1-1 draw uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, Spurs should have won that game. That, that Liverpool was was thoroughly outplayed in that game, uh, but you know it is what it is. Liverpool scored on a deflected goal. You know, whatever you, you take, you take your point. If, if you're Tottenham, you take your point and and you get out of town. Now, the big match of the week this week was played on Thursday, when Tottenham just absolutely hammered Arsenal in the North London derby, three nil. Harry Kane, two goals in the first half. The first one on a penalty kick. Second one on a diving header off a corner. Uh, that one came after Arsenal, Arsenal's uh, Rob Holding had received his second yellow card and the ejection that goes along with it. Uh, then Hyung Min San scored early in the second half to make it a three-goal lead, and, and that put the game away. Um, this, if you remember, brother, we talked about this uh, a couple of months ago. This was the match that got postponed by Arsenal. The Arsenal requested a postponement because they had one case of COVID. And they had players away at the Africa Africa Cup of Nations uh, tournament and and they had loaned players out during the January window. So they had they had a, a, a bit of a player shortage. So they asked for the game to be post, uh, to be rescheduled because of COVID because of one case of COVID. And somehow the, the, the Premier League went along with this garbage. Well, this is what you get, brother. This is a great example of karma. Because Arsenal looked awful. And now the big match comes today because Tottenham won their game yesterday. They beat Burnley 1 0. Um, again, Harry Kane on a penalty kick. And right now, as we speak, Tottenham is in fourth place. Now, if, if Newcastle. Which is the is the club that was purchased by uh, Saudi Arabia sheiks and and, and uh, I'll say it these these despicable people who who are, are responsible for for uh, for the death of the American journalist uh, Khashoggi uh, they're the people that bought Newcastle and I can't believe that 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 sale was was sanctioned but it was but if Newcastle can either draw or defeat Arsenal today then my Spurs are going back to the Champions League. Even though they both have one game left to play, but Tottenham would would have a. Is that good or bad? It would be great. Champions League is where you want to be, brother. I mean, they're not in the Champions League. Well, not this season. No. Champions League. Champions League. Every team that goes into Champions League, first of all, they get they get something like a forty or fifty forty or fifty million pound bonus just for going to the Champions League. So think about what you can buy with with fifty million pounds. That's 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 a good player right there. At least one good, really good player, or two very good players. So that helps. That helps the team get better because that's that's money that you can spend on players that is not coming out of your own coffers. Everybody loves that. That's free spend right there. So we'll see what happens there. But in the in the in the last week of the season, Arsenal will will face Everton. Which uh, you know, you're your arch rival, brother, as a Liverpool guy like you right, are. Right, right. Uh, but Ever- Everton needs to win that game to avoid the possibility of what would be a very embarrassing relegation because they are they are just above the relegation zone. So 
Everton would 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 will have a lot of motivation to get some kind of result from that match and and not lose. Um, meanwhile, Tottenham will face Norwich, which already has clinched relegation and and basically has nothing to play for. So that's kind of a perfect scenario. So the hope is that today, former Tottenham man Christian or Kieran Trippier, who plays for Newcastle, and and he 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 actually is quoted as saying he's going to do whatever he can to help his former club. So good man trips. We like you. We're, we're happy. We hope you do something. You know, deliver a cross that somebody can head in, and, and we'd we'd be thrilled with you today. Uh, but that that match is three o'clock. So if you want to watch, if, if anybody wants to check it out, no, I don't. Um, you should. The uh, like I said, Liverpool plays Southampton on Tuesday. If a win there puts them back one point behind Man City, Liverpool does trailing goal difference by seven. So it's unlikely that they're going to be able to make that up in two games. So Manchester City is is very much on the cusp of of winning the title, even though they they had the the disappointing draw and surprising draw on on uh, on Sunday. So that's that's basically where things okay, are right now, well, brother, with the with with the soccer. Let's go Tottenham. Yes. Okay. The Columbus NFL Paris. released their schedule this week. Well, last week I should say. Yes. And uh, it, you know they made it another TV show again. That's what they do. I, I mean, is this a TV <coughs> show that you have to watch? I mean, come on. Well. It's a you know it's like this isn't this isn't like a draft, this is about okay we're gonna either win or lose the season based on looking at the schedule based on the players right now so, you know I don't know I just it, this is like non programming but they made such a big deal about it, I mean I understand it, the it, draft being programming it, it's it's some it's something for for I mean the the, ske- the schedule is basically programmed. It, it not not as a as a TV program. I'm talking about program. Like they know who they're going to play. Right. You you can you can pretty much figure out who they're going to play. But they want to make it a TV event because NFL people will watch anything. Right. Now, both teams, the Jets and the Giants, both will start on September 11th, and the the Giants are opening on the road against the Tennessee Titans. The Jets will open at home against the Baltimore Ravens. Um, after. Opening on the road, the Giants have four of their next five games at home. And the lone road game, and I'm using road with air quotes, uh, is they will be playing the Green Bay Packers in London at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Wow. How about that? Uh, And that game is on October 9th. Now, the only disagreement I have with, with the schedule is generally they would give the teams a bye after they after they play the game in London. Right. So f- and the Giants don't. The Giants are going October 2nd game, October 9th, London game, October 16th or whatever. There's no break. Well, you know what? The fly to London's five and a half hours. The fly to Los Angeles is five and a half hours. So I tell you what, the, the jet process. lag coming back from London is very real, brother. I know. I've done very it. Very real. I know. So, but I'll tell you what, with the Giants and the Jets, the Giants schedule, I, I like it better than the Jets schedule. And, I, and I'm not even 100% sure why. Uh, because they they do play a lot of the same teams, but the Jets to me have have the more difficult schedule. I think the Jets are looking at about a seven and ten season, and I really do think the Giants can win nine games, just based on the schedule. That'd be, I don't know if they will, but that'd be fun. I to could see. see it. Let's put it that way. That'd be fun to see. That just about does it for our show today from the press box. Here every Monday, right here on ninety point three WHPC, the Voice of Nassau Community College and streaming at nccradio.org. My name is Rob Leonard. He is Tim Leonard. We'll see you next Monday. This show becomes a podcast later on. Join Big Ed Newlands next as he does the show called Good Gold, playing the oldies you don't hear on the radio anymore. And plus, he's Big Ed, so it's a lot of fun to listen to. So thank you for listening. We'll see you next time, and uh, bye-bye.